global leader in the automotive sector. Through OVEN, the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network, we're bringing together our regional strengths, our post-secondary institutions, our incubators, accelerators, municipalities, economic development corporations, and others to create hubs like AreaX.O that support the commercialization of made in Ontario solutions regionally. And then we're connecting them across the province so that we're working at it as all Ontario, all in, to own the future of the automotive and mobility sector. We love partnering with AreaX.O and Invest Ottawa because through their programs and events like Cap Canada, they help drive our vision to empower women to lead in the field of mobility innovation. We now know that women and men have different mobility patterns. And if we don't have a seat at the table, the future of global smart mobility will be driven by men and their visions. That is why we believe it is important to help enable and accelerate the growth and success of more women founders, women led and owned companies, especially in the field of smart mobility. Being Canada's largest federal research and development organization, our scientists, engineers, and business experts work closely with thousands of Canadian organizations, helping them bring new technologies to market. Collaboration is the key to success when it comes to implementing change, so we're thrilled to help Canada be more competitive through innovations and mobility excellence. While transitioning to new technologies has become one of the main drivers of the transportation sector, our experts and facilities are well positioned to provide R&D solutions for all levels of the supply chain. From the team at Watt, we wish you a successful Cab Canada and we hope you all enjoy the event. So I'd like to wish you all a great day at Cab Canada with a great agenda and a great lineup of speakers. We look forward to assisting our collaborators overcome innovation challenges. Welcome back everyone. I'm now coming to you live from Hub 350, the gateway to Canada's largest technology park and the home of Connected Autonomous Vehicle Public Test Track powered by Area X. O. I hope you enjoyed some lunch and power networking with our experts, innovators and businesses online with us today. As we ramp up for an exciting afternoon, I'm delighted to welcome Greg DeRay, Regional Director for Ontario, Investor Services at Invest in Canada, a, value, a valued Cap Canada innovator sponsor to our stage. He will introduce our next panel session, the Smart Mobility Global Investment and Business Expansion Opportunity. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. My name is Greg Duray, and I'm the Regional Director uh, for Ontario at Invest in Canada. I'm very happy to be here today in person in Ottawa attending the Canada Conference. As all of us here today know, the automotive industry is undergoing a significant shift with technological advances and evolving mobility preferences redefining its future. Global economic trends and market forces are rapidly shifting towards new technologies and are transforming the next generation of vehicles and transportation experiences. Here in Ontario, our competitive combination of global leading automotive and technology sectors is recognized as North America's most fertile ground for developing the vehicles of the future. Or the future is connected, autonomous, shared and electric. Smart mobility innovations such as CAVs, automated shuttles, and drones are revolutionizing the way we work, live, and play. And this revolution is absolutely underway here in Canada and especially in places like, like Ottawa. For example, more than 200 companies um, in Ontario are already developing connected and autonomous vehicle technologies, a global market expected to be worth over $1.3 trillion by 2035. And global investors are taking note of Ontario's talent and competitive advantages. They see a diverse and educated talent base, a strong system of post-secondary institutions producing those graduates, unprecedented market access, and strong government support. They see a thriving ecosystem of startups and scale-ups, all doing cutting edge research and that is driving innovation and growing our economy. Look no further than the pace of activity and investment that is happening here in Ottawa and the real competitive advantages that focus on smart mobility is generating. We at Invest in Canada are helping to make this happen. 
Invest in Canada is Canada's first national investment promotion agency. Our mission is to promote, facilitate, and accelerate foreign direct investment in Canada. Invest in Canada has worked closely with many global companies with projects in Canada, many of whom are also in this room and on this panel. It is great seeing you all today. I want to thank um, Invest Ottawa, Area X.O, and the Canada North Business Association for hosting this event and for having me here today. I look forward to learning from the panelists and hearing about their success in Ontario and Ottawa. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And Rosie, please take it away. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, thank you, Greg. Bon après-midi, tout le monde. Bon après-midi à tous et à tous. Um, I am so excited to be here. Like Greg's, Greg said, I'm Rosie Edda from CTV Morning Live, and it's my mission to learn more about technology. And it's such an incredible venue in which we're at here at Bayview Yards, Ottawa's innovation hub. I want to welcome all the speakers and all of you are here. Sophie Chen, who's here beside me, and those who are online, the panelists who are, are online virtually. We have a great panel lined up for you today. Now, building on Greg's opening remarks, this panel is going to explore how a thriving smart mobility cluster creates competitive advantage in new R&D business and investment opportunities for companies and regional economies. We're going to explore some of the advantages Canada offers broadly, and then we're going to do a deep dive on Ottawa as an example of a global tech hub a case study and with many opportunities and learning opportunities. So today I am very honored to welcome leaders from world-class tech companies that are investing and expanding in Canada and our nation's capital and leveraging its smart mobility cluster. Now they're gonna share stories and provide exclusive insight into how the leading ca Canadian and global technology firms collaborate with this ecosystem to gain a competitive advantage. These Canadian and global companies are collectively driving innovation, creating new jobs, and growing our economy. So we're going to get started right now. We're going to set the stage for our discussion. First off, what I'd like to do is invite each of the panelists to introduce themselves, talk about the role and their organization, and how they contribute to smart mobility. Just maybe a minute, a minute and a half or so of this quick introduction. And what we're going to do is, because Sophie Chen is right here in person, Sophie Chen, Market Director, Asia Pacific Global Expansion, Invest Ottawa. Sophie, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and to talk about your organization, please. Sure. Thank you, Rosie. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. So I'm Sophie Chen, I'm the Market Director for the Asia Pacific region at the Global Expansion Team of Invest Alta Team. Uh, being here, actually, uh, I have been with the team for more than 16 years in my past uh, uh, 16 years, I have always been working on global investment trade uh, related to technology development, especially in recent years for smart mobility. So it is my pleasure here to meet with the colleagues and uh, uh, join this panel today to uh, discuss more about uh, the, the successful stories and etc. with our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. This is wonderful to get things going here. And can you share just for just a uh, quick key advantages that uh, that global tech companies are looking to expand right here in Ottawa. Okay, sure. Before I talk about uh, Ottawa specific, maybe I start with Canada as a country because uh, for global companies looking to do business in North America, first of all, they actually look at the country as a whole as a business destination to do technology development. Uh, so if you look at, uh, I mean, I have been traveling a lot outside of Canada to different countries. Uh, many of the countries ranked very high on the global economy landscape, but I always feel I'm impressed by the overall, you know, mix of uh, uh, like uh, the advantages in Canada as a business destination. Uh, here I just would like to highlight three elements I found very attractive to global investors coming here to do business in Canada. Uh, the first one I would say is talent. Well, in the based knowledge-based economy, nothing is more important than talent itself. If we call like world economy development, uh, 
1.0, everything is built probably around on natural resources, location, and etc. But when you move to economic development 2.0, people are always talking about clusters, you know, like being together with the people, a company is doing similar things. But now we're moving actually probably to economic development 3.0. What does that mean to people? It's actually more focused on people, on talent. It's not like in old days, uh, com uh, people chase the companies where they are and try to locate themselves to set up for, you know, their, their permanent home. Now the companies are chasing the talent. Uh, they want to choose the location that where talents are. So for Canada, uh, for, for Canada, I just want to show you stats with more than 59% of its workforce with um, a post-secondary degree, we actually ranked the highest uh, among G7 countries. Uh, for the highest educated workforce here. That's very attractive to technology companies, especially for engineers. We ranked uh, the highest uh, among the G7 countries for access to quality engineers as well. So those are very, very attractive for global leaders and the technology companies, especially for smart mobility companies to look at Canada. The other two I would say, the second would be the ecosystem we have here. It's a very strong, uh, you know, technology ecosystem here with the top universities we have in Canada, with all the government research labs and the institutes we have in Canada, and also with the global companies already doing business here. Uh, if you look at the top 10 global technology leaders, all of them have presence here in Canada. So you have a strong ecosystem here. What's the third one? What's the third point? Uh, so the third one, I would say cost of doing business. People often ignore that or maybe not put too much emphasis on that. But compared to other G7 countries, yeah. our overall business cost, especially in technology development, uh, we have a very generous SRED tax credit. That actually adds to the cost benefit we have overall for lower business tax business cost and also for our like land development material what I mean you can keep the list going but that will give us a very good mix of uh, cost advantages very attractive here yeah very doing attractive business here. okay um, joining us virtually from Toronto Veronica Marin autonomy expert and manager of the advanced algorithms group transportation solutions and uh, Thales Canada and uh, Veronica good afternoon to you in could you please introduce yourself and uh, give us a brief uh, um, description of your organization, please? So, um, Veronica Marin, thank you for the introduction. Um, the lead of the Advanced Algorithms in Research and Innovation at, uh, at TALIS. And uh, what we do, we have a kind of a, a, a team of 30 plus people, and we are keeping our pioneer role in, in rail environment, rail applications. Uh, so we developed 30, more than 30 years ago, the first automated uh, driverless train system. And now we are keeping up our pioneer, let's say, role and looking forward to develop, um, the uh, deploy the first autonomous train. So bringing those autonomous capabilities to the train and, uh, you know, bringing all the cutting edge technologies that are for uh, autonomous uh, vehicles, but now in the rail environment. The key advantages or benefits um, that Thales is gaining by being a part of our national ecosystem and innovation ecosystem. So, in order for us to bring the autonomous capabilities, we have to, you know, bring the the the, the key experts. And in the ecosystem, we found that we have the the academic partners that actually expand and or complement our talent. And as well, we have the SMEs uh, that actually complement the or we actually have the strategic partnerships that actually deploy we can deploy a successful uh, demo demonstration for our clients so in this ecosystem we have various programs uh, that we've been part of uh, AVIN is one of them uh, we have Encore we have uh, also academic collaborations as in my tax and uh, in and NSERC uh, fund, uh, funding as well, uh, as well Talent Edge, where we actually find the, you know, the the highly qualified people that are, you know, self-drive, uh, so, so 
with that motivation to excel at this, you know, uh, developing these technologies here in Canada. We also have, you know, collaborations across Canada, not only, you know, within Ontario, we have uh, collaboration with Vancouver uh, companies that are actually supporting us in the safety analysis and, and certification of the uh, autonomous uh, systems or applications, uh, as well as in Montreal, Quebec, uh, our colleagues there, and also in Ottawa with uh, Lumiver, uh, that is actually our partner for developing uh, a cutting edge, uh, let's say, sensor using a LiDAR uh technology so we when we put all this in all um kind of see all together we see that the the ecosystem is just bringing the best uh environment to uh, foster collaboration so that we can actually think together uh bringing those gaps in policies and uh standards so that we instead of you know just competing uh, competing uh, among ourselves, we are working together to bring or to, con you know, materialize the autonomy roadmap in general. And uh, joining us virtually from Vancouver is Philip Mies, founder and CEO of Indro Robotics. Uh, Philip, can you just give us a brief introduction to yourself and your company? And good sure, afternoon, yeah. by the way. Good afternoon. Yep, thank you for, uh, for the introduction there, Rosie. Um, I am, as you say, joining virtually from um, from Vancouver, but uh, do spend quite a lot of time uh, over in Ottawa. And um, I'm so pleased to be to be joining the stage here. Obviously, we've got uh, such an amazing group of presenters, and and thank you to all of those who joined virtually and in person as well. Um, I, I uh, lead the team here at Indra Robotics. I founded the company some eight years ago. Um, and I've seen such exciting times in that in that eight years. We're very proud of the achievements we've made, both in drone and uh, ground robotics, so aerial drones and ground robotics, and very much in the communications field as well. Um, our Ottawa, Ottawa lab is a perfect example of that, sort of joining the drones, the robots, and the communications all together. Um, on a daily basis, we'll be rolling devices out of that lab in Ottawa and doing demonstrations live to companies all over the world um, we've got robotics and drone solutions that we build in-house, but we also uh, integrate quite a lot of cutting-edge technology, much of it from companies based in Canada, and, and many of them actually here in Ottawa. So I would echo very much what uh, Veronica was just saying there. It's all about access um, to the talent and the collaboration with the companies in and around the area. So uh, yes, we're very pleased to be here, and uh, I'm eager to share some more of our um, recent developments as, as we go through. So thank you. Thank you very much, Philip. And joining us virtually, good afternoon, Sean Sperling, Vice President, Enterprise and Public Sector, Nokia Canada. Good afternoon to you, uh, Sean. And let's uh, just get a brief introduction from yourself and please your company. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, so uh, Sean Sperling, my leader, Enterprise and Public Sector Business in Canada from the two um, I guess I've been in the industry for way too long. Um, spent many years overseas in both Europe and Asia. I grew up in the in Canada. Um, and so Nokia, you look at Nokia, Nokia is a you know, very large communication, global communications company, and the largest provider of networks here in Canada. Um, and if I uh, if you look at what we do, we do everything from 5G networks, um, both private and public systems, high-speed optical networks. Um, if you're getting high speed to your home, it's most likely across the Nokia system here in Canada. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, based in Ottawa is our global security center where uh, we support over 200 million devices that respond to security threats. Across the globe, um, based in Canada. Very clear. So, what I'm going to ask of you is either A, could you maybe close to your microphone or change that setup set slightly because it's very muffled sure. voice. Like, <laughs> is that any better? Oh, that's ooh, much better. It's great. Okay. Improved. 
Thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to double back to you, Sean, but that sounds much better. Thank you for that. We're going to go right now to Nicole, Vice President of Worldwide Sales, Automotive and Autonomy at Hexagon's Autonomy and Positioning Division. Good afternoon to you, to you Nicole. Can you just give us a brief introduction of yourself and your company? Yeah, good afternoon, Rosie. Thanks for having me. As uh, you mentioned, my name is Nicole Weyer, VP of Worldwide Sales for Automotive and Autonomy at Hexagon's Autonomy and Positioning Division. Uh, Hexagon as a whole is extremely focused on empowering an autonomous future and doing that sustainably. Um, within our division, when it comes to smart mobility, uh, we are very focused on research and autonomous solutions where we deliver products and services in a production sense and also in the sense of enabling research. Um, a lot of that research has driven us to Ottawa, to Area X.0, which is where we have a facility. And I love the opening video because I saw several of our hexagon vehicles that are running around Area X.0. And that's where we collect a lot of data, build a lot of software, and are doing a lot of testing on our products. Um, outside of autonomy, we're also very focused on precise positioning solutions. So we're able to take advantage of the space and have our base stations and correction services there to do more testing for our autonomous solutions. So um, I wish I was coming to you from our office in Ottawa, but unfortunately I am here in Detroit in the home office like I've been for almost two years. But very, very nice to be here and happy to see everyone. Um, hello to the other panelists. Wonderful. Uh, yes, we wish you were here, but it's great with technology. We can also virtually be together. So uh, another great advantage. I'm going to go back to you, Sean. Now we've uh, introduced all of our panelists and we're going to get into this discussion and start to unpack um, how innovation and how being here at X.O can, can assist with uh, further developments. And Sean, um, once again, here from Nokia, and I know that we've got the sound working a little bit better here. Let's talk about your move and expansion here to X.O and uh, talk about how that has uh, become advantageous to the company. Sure, and in, in Nokia, as I think I hopefully came through last time, was we're, we bring, if you want, networks around the globe from wireless to to optical to fixed networks and so when we're working with area x .O, we saw an opportunity to bring our capabilities and start to work closely with you know small medium enterprises um, who can expand a, a, upon what nokia can bring to the table and bring solutions to the industry whether that industry is you know, smart agriculture or smart cities, um, you know, working closely with them. There are a lot of very innovative companies in the Ottawa area, um, a lot of government support within the Ottawa area. And so it allowed us to quickly to bring, you know, different solutions, showcase different solutions in the, in the Ottawa area. Um, it's turned into a showcase center for us where I can bring both, you know, existing customers and potential customers into Area X. Auto, show them the solutions that can be um, brought forward um, to address their concerns. And in some cases, they start then working closely with Area X. Auto, um, to address some of their business needs that, you know, is not a Nokia focused um, uh, capability, but leverages are our capabilities so it's been a it's been very successful for nokia veronica i'm going to move on to you and i'm just wondering if you can expand a bit on um the the, the different products that uh, that um, have developed in performing these autonomous rail here in canada so how have you been able to expand the company by performing uh certain uh tests and um and and performances here in Canada. Sure, I will happy to share that. Uh, we have, I mean, as part of our our collaborations and the ecosystem, uh, one of the outcomes is uh, it, it, it was or, or has been several uh, client demonstrations. So the latest was with Metrolinx. Uh, uh, some of you might know that it's a commuter uh, rail system that in, interconnects the greater, uh, the greater Toronto area. So 
we actually have deployed uh, um, kind of a shadow system. So that is collecting data for a year and is continuing collecting data for us. Uh, it has enabled us to develop, further develop the systems uh, that are kind of bringing uh, autonomous capabilities, such as detecting obstacles, detecting worker uh, track side workers, so enhancing the safety of the operator, and also improving the the, uh, the station to station uh, travel time. So these are you know key uh, features that we were uh, kind of addressing with autonomous capabilities. But in this particular project, we were also exploring all the weather conditions and you know Canadian winter is very harsh so it was great to collect all that data with uh, different weather conditions so it was start we started uh, in in deploying this in December so we collected all the winter and also summer spring so and it has actually uh, allowed us to collect uh, data like real data that is is actually uh, helping to identify, you know, the, the challenges in the technology and also address the key points that are, are going to be, you know, the major concerns when we deploy this, uh, this, these systems. So right now it is collecting data, but at the same time with that data, we actually have a, a dem demonstration with the clients that is not only the operator, also government. Ontario government, where we actually deploy, de demonstrate or, or, or showcase what are these, uh, the, the capability of these systems with real data. So we are just looking forward to, you know, continue and expand this to other, other areas in Canada. I have to say we also have to have another, another system or, or others or the trains collecting data in, in New York. So it is not only in in Canada, and we would like to continue that. Not only limited, of course, to Metrolinks. We want to that, uh, collect data across Canada and across the world. <laughs> Thank you for that, Veronica. I'm going to move on to Philip and uh, founder and CEO of Indro Robotics. And uh, Philip, you had a long list of industry firsts, and in early 20. 21, you expanded from Vancouver right to here in Ottawa at the area X.0. Uh, can we unpack that move and, and give us some of the details and, and some of the pluses of that expansion? Sure, yes, I'd be happy to. Um, I mean, as, as you mentioned, we are a drone and robotics company. So um, when we expanded, we really need to pull in more specialized skills. And those, those are particular skills. Um, and Ottawa has them, uh, it really has experts in communications, robotics, mechatronics, um, as well as amazing universities with very well matched programs. So cho choosing Ottawa was really an easy part of the decision. Um, but to recruit these skills, um, that whilst they're out there, obviously we need to be uh, pulling them in from other companies. Um, and so whilst we had a lot of exciting projects and we're working on the cutting edge of robots and drones, which is an exciting industry, we also needed to be able to offer these new recruits um, a lab with access to re real cutting edge communications that you can't get anywhere else, um, a test facility that was right on the doorstep. And, and often sort of other SMEs who are on the fast track as well, you know, this excitement breeds excitement. And when we're working with these companies so closely, it really does spark off other things. Um, and that's what we found at Area Exo. All of these things were already in place. So to move to Area Exo was, was really a simple choice and it's paid us off um, in dividends. Uh, right right on, our, on our doorstep at Area Exo, and we've got access to a lot of the government and the regulators. Um, being in the drone and robotics company uh, industry, we are fairly heavily um, regulated. So being able to sort of um, invite the, the local regulators and government um, workers along to the, to the test track and see what we're doing while it's still in the R&D mode um, allows us to sort of convince them that of our safety procedures and safety recommendations, but also allows them to be able to see how the cutting edge of the technology is really coming about. So having those that access to the regulators has been great for us. Um, just having access overall, really. I mean, we fly in people from all over the world right into our Ottawa um, location to do demonstrations. And Area XO is, what, 15 minutes from the airport, so it's no distance at all. 
Um, many of our clients, though, don't come quite so far. We have many clients who are based in Canada and, and many of them actually in Ottawa. I could even narrow down and say many of our clients are also at Area XO. Um, Area XO has got a real campus feel for it for those who, who haven't been there yet. Um, it's it, everybody sort of um, can mingle a little bit together. We're we'll regularly bump into engineers and decision makers from well from Nokia. We've got Sean on the line here. I, we were one of the companies that were working with Nokia, and um, they brought us into Area XO, and we continue to work with Nokia, but also now with Area XO and the other people in there, Ericsson and Microsoft, just to name a few. So th these casual discussions we often get into at Area XO can really turn into aha moments that uh, that have spurred the development of a lot of our equipment. So yeah, it's it's, it's been a natural choice to move to Ottawa. Go to you, Sophie. And now that we have a little bit more national insight, now could you provide us a little bit more detail on the attributes of Ottawa's smart mobility cluster? Sure. Well, you already heard a lot from my colleagues on the panel, you know, sharing the key highlights of Ottawa's advantages for smart mobility. Uh, I shared the Canada overall advantage here. I actually would like to share, probably highlight two things uh, that Ottawa is Know, like unique uh, in the areas of, uh, you know, the first one is as the capital city, people think we are often we are bored government town, but actually that means a good advantage being close to regulators, policy makers. You may heard it from, uh, from Philip and the other people on this panel already mentioned, uh, especially in future of cars and smart mobility area, we are dealing with cutting edge technologies. So being close to the regulators and policy makers will give us advantage to build a truly collaborative environment for companies to develop technologies in early stage, uh, just to get them involved. And then that's a major advantage we have to build that uh, capital city advantages. Also on top of that, you heard about uh, the research labs, research institutes we have like NRC, CRC, all all these you know, research labs related to mobility and the smart mobility based here, we have actually more than 65 government research labs located here. So they pour funding and everything, and also on top of that, uh, the Ontario government even network, they all pour funding into this area to support the product development of all the companies. Uh, you know, you heard from today, and also many of them couldn't be here, but uh, they all share the same. Uh, just give you an example to put uh, into a little bit more context for this. Uh, the earlier this week, we had a webinar focusing on the Japanese market for smart cities. Actually, we got a direct feedback from the audience quoting. They said, well, we have seen nothing like this, like Eric's at all in other parts of you know the world, especially in Japan, to see how collaborative we are as a center and hub for smart cities and smart mobility to work on those areas. So those are direct feedback from clients. The, the last thing I would say, the element I want to highlight uh, is our strong ecosystem, specifically on the smart mobility area. I find here, actually, uh, I would say uh, the, for the industrial telecom capabilities, we account for 90% of Canada's industrial R&D in telecom research here mm -hmm. for next generation networks, which is key on the infrastructure side, like our uh, panelist Sean from Nokia mentioned. These are fundamental technology elements to build a strong cluster here. So I would say those are the ones I would like to highlight here. Thank you for that, Sophie. Nicole, can, can you unpack a little bit more with a bit more detail as to the R&D testing activities that are being undertaken right here at Area X. O? Yeah, no problem, Rosie. So um, several years ago, we were looking at expanding out some R&D testing, some software development for all of the brands under the autonomy and positioning division. And we had several customers and partners that were in the Ottawa area that we were very familiar with. And we were able to, I, I want to say stumble across area X. O is a great place for us to put an engineering team and to be able to have the facilities that could house our research vehicles where we collect data, build software, and, and that's really the key to us enabling autonomous research with our different sensing software solutions that we have at Hexagon. Um, so 
I, I can say that in 2019, when we kicked off the relationship and, and we got our office in Ottawa, we had three employees there um, from an engineering side developing software, and we've, we've doubled that and then more. And our hope is to con continue to expand that office and continue to extend, expand the type of research that we do there. And I can't go without saying again, you saw two research vehicles in that opening clip. And that's exactly why we need to be in a facility that has so such a rich ecosystem, has space, has collaboration, has universities nearby. It enables us to do our software development, data collection um, much more efficiently. And of course, the, the rich, rich talent pool um, when looking for software developers that have autonomous experience, there was no further to look than Ottawa. Um, so I think from, from our point of view, this has been a, a great decision. It's been a great collaboration as well with the other companies and, of course, Invest Ottawa. Um, and we're just very happy to be at Area Xdato. Thank you for that. Uh, Sean, can you uh, describe why Nokia chose to be a founding partner here in AreaX.O. Let's unpack that a bit more. Sure, and, and part of that was showcasing our capabilities, right? Um, finding solutions for our customers. And for example, one of the things that we did working with a number of the companies out there, in, including Indro, is pulled together a, a mobile van where it had our 5G, has a 4G for public safety, has um, you know, an integrated operations center that you can see and act as a command and control, basically, so you can see all your assets on site. Um, partnering with, um, to bring in, you know, the capabilities where we can see everything flying in the sky. And so we can take that capability anywhere across Ontario, showcase it for public safety, for search and rescue, obviously drones being very critical to all that, and hence our partnership with Indro. Um, but also then it could be for smart agriculture demonstrations and bringing the connectivity in the middle of the rural area with satellite backhaul. It could be for, you know, manufacturing as they move to smart manufacturing. And so um, all of these cases were a foundational layer, but we need strong partners, very strong innovative partners and in research in this area. And it, it was a natural place to be able to do that, both in a mobility space, but um, in a smart city space and an agriculture space. Um, so it's just, it's been a great partnership from day one. Question for each of our panelists. And uh, then what I'm gonna do is go to any questions that we may have from our viewers. But the question for each of the panelists, and I'm gonna start off with uh, Veronica, is what qualities do you look for in a location in an establishment in order for your company to seamlessly expand and thrive veronica i think uh sean and each call mentioned this very well and also philip uh and i think uh, uh sophie also also mentioned this uh I think we look for a first uh, a collaborative uh, environment where we actually not only have uh, access to academics, but also a, a highly qualified talent pool that we can actually work with. And based on our experience, this uh, academic collabor collaboration has always been the first uh, place to actually get our, I mean, our, our team uh, growing because uh, based on these collaborations, we most of the the people that we have worked with after they graduate, they, they we we hire them, so they already know the the system, they already know the you know the environment that we work in, and they're looking for the same goals. At the same time, uh, we will look for you know incubators and uh, policy makers, so be close to them, so that we can actually leverage that uh, and and this collaboration with small medium enterprises that's key for us to to identify where to be where to expand and and keep working question will be put to you nicole yeah i, I think I'm, I'm not going to reiterate all the points that veronica just mentioned but i think that the one i will add is just 
the support behind autonomy research that when you come to an area that has a lot of companies that are doing innovative things, it makes it a lot easier for you to do the research and for you to grow and expand your business. So this was a great home for us. Sean. Sure, and, if, and maybe I'll bring a little bit of a different spin too. From a, from a global perspective, you know, we have, you know, as indicated earlier, around 2,700 employees in the Ottawa area. And, and part of that decision was around, you know, from a political point of view, the stability of the, the government, quality of life for employees, et cetera. But every R&D center in Nokia has to be able to compete, right? Um, they have to be competitive against other, other R&D centers around the globe. And, um, if I look, if we look at Ottawa, from a high tech wage point of view, Ottawa is very cost effective versus, you know, fundamentally 50% of what, what R&D is, R&D costs in the San Francisco Bay Area, right? Um, we, have, we have very favorable tax rates for businesses here in Canada. The other one was, if we take a look at it, EDC itself, like the Export Development Group, they're very supportive in taking our capabilities that we do here in Canada and taking them globally. And that, you know, that's part of their business and supporting Canadian companies going globally. So even though we're a global company, they support us doing that business as well. So um, in addition to all the other points that were highlighted earlier, um, Ottawa is a great place for Nokia to, to do R and D. We've been here for, for well over 10 years with uh, very strong R and D and we, we plan on, on uh, expanding that with the support of the government here. Philip, we'll ask you the same question. You're muted right now, but we'll, uh, let's see, are you frozen there? No, you're not frozen. No. <laughs> just saying, I was just saying very Phil. I was concentrating. I was trying to. I was trying to think of an answer to your question that hadn't already been given by the by the group here. It's, uh, it's the problem with going last. I think you can see really because we're all iterating the same points. Really, it is about collaboration. It is about people um, and how we can all work together. So the the very fact that you're asking the question and getting the same answer does show that you know, we've all got the same goal. We're all shared and building a company. Maybe as I come from a little bit of the other end, you know, we're, we're still a startup. I think we can call ourselves a startup after eight years. We, we have 30 odd employees. We move fast um, and being able to do these exciting things and then show them off to companies, you know, like the rest of the panelists is really what's what's drawn to us to here and, and allowed us to be able to build so quickly. Um, bit of a shameless plug here, you know, if you want to work in an exciting industry and a growing company at a great place, Indra Robotics are hiring. There you go. There you go. Not at all. Not at all. That's not a bad plug at all. Thank you, Phil. Sophie, so after hearing all the remarks on what it is that these tech leading companies are looking for in terms of uh, ease and expansion and, and positive output, what is it that you are looking to do in the future to continue to make this area so attractive to tech companies? Sure, that's a great question. You already heard a lot of good comments from um, the panelists about why they chose Alta and why they are here doing business. Uh, I would say our team at Invest Alta, Eric Stratton, will continue building on those uh, advantages we have, the talent we have, the cost advantages we have, also more important, the truly collaborative, great ecosystem we have. That's a uh, uh, people often say it takes the whole village to raise a child, and it takes everybody's effort to continue contributing to this great ecosystem. And we will continuously welcome more companies, great companies like what we have today, to join our ecosystem and expand here. And then that will make Ottawa even more attractive as a location to do R&D and to do business specifically. It's uh, very exciting, uh, the things that are happening in this area, and I do believe that Sonia may have a few uh, viewer questions for us, so we'll just uh, pass the mic over to Sonia, and uh, these questions will be shared for our panelists. 
in fact, we are just out of time. And so if you have questions, we welcome them. You can pop them into the chat. Our global expansion team and all the amazing companies that are in the panel today, they work very closely with us. I have the privilege of working with most of them directly. Please let us know, please reach out. I wanted to thank Rosie and all of our panelists for the incredible discussion, to Greg DeRay and the team at Invest in Canada for their generous sponsorship of CAP Canada and your collaboration all year long. This was a really special panel for me. I started my journey with Invest Ottawa in the global expansion team. I work closely with Sophie and it makes me want to get back out on the road and sell Ottawa. So thank you all very, very much for that excellent discussion. I'm going to throw it back now to Hub 350 to my friend Jamie Patton. Truly a hybrid event. We have a dream for making this really interactive. And of course, you're all part of the experiment and all the trialing that we're doing with our technology. Jamie, are you with me?